We have a free NAS Mini. Yes. It says Mini. It says Mini. Free it's got yeah. nice handles too, actually. It's boxed really nice. We, yeah, we haven't, we actually haven't actually unboxed this yet, so it's an actual unboxing. Usually I, I unbox it and put it all back in the box, and we decided this time, because we had time to film while we need to get this uh, yeah. with the unboxing, we did cut the tape. I did. So I wanted to make only, sure it was in there. That's the only part of it. Yeah, we had to make sure that the thing is in here. It appears to be in here. So they come with the free NAS mini accessories box, which has a power cable and an Ethernet cable and some screws. With some really nice foam. All like fitted. this is all is that for like if they ship yeah, it with if drives? If they ship it with hard drives, they do have oh, uh, cutouts. Fancy. We ordered this without hard drives. Uh in terms of expediency for the client, we got these HGST 4 terabyte Death Star NAS drives. This thing is packaged really nice. Yeah, these. this is uh, actually really nice because the way these trays are and everything yeah. else. We're going to be installing these drives in it and for the review. And it's actually, mini. This, this is going to a customer. Like the size of the box, it is relatively mini by comparison. Wow. This is nice. Ooh, plastic off. Oh yeah, the keys are in the the keys are in it. The accessory box. I mean the keys. Yeah, the keys. <laughs> it's got a dual network ports. It looks like it does. Triple network ports. Triples, and a USB, and a VGA and a console. So we have on the back here, like he said, off, we've got we uh, three off. three network ports on here. USB console. Very cool. VGA out in case you care what's on the screen and you want to see it in VGA. Well, sometimes it gets stuck and you want to know why. Tamper resistant. They do have a sticker on it. That means we're not supposed to open it. Should we open it? Oh, door was open. Door was open already. We will open it. I want so to open it. We'll open it and dig inside <laughs> for you so we can start really covering what's inside of here. So we have the free NAS Mini all set up, configured, unboxed, and tested. Actually, we plugged it all in, set it up last night after we unboxed it. Me and Steve were just excited to get it open. And uh, it works great. So far, we haven't had any issues. I don't expect to have any issues. Uh, if you're not familiar with IX systems uh, like I am, they make a lot of really good choices on hardware, a really well put together machine here. So let's dive into some of the details. Uh, we've installed four of these Death Star NAS drives. I didn't say Death Star, Desk Star NAS. Um, these are really good drives. I've used these in the past. Uh, for the particular job, the four, four terabyte drives is completely adequate based on the storage needs of this customer. And it will definitely be well performing for what they want to do for some basic file storage. It's actually going to a graphics design company um, that this is this is big enough for them right now. And I want to get this off the rip because this is everyone's question. This runs free NAS. This has ZFS. ZFS is amazing. It's ultra reliable. I have a series of videos on it. Uh, we've had Michael Lucas on here who didn't just write the book on ZFS. He wrote two of them. And there's a lot of reasons the enterprise market loves ZFS. The reason that consumers sometimes have a problem with it, or I've even heard it called the hidden cost of ZFS, is what if I only want to buy two drives now and then buy two drives later? You can't easily expand a you can't expand a Z, single ZFS volume, and you can't easily expand into two more drives. They end up not being part of the same array. You can make an array with two drives and another array with two drives. So it is best from a planning standpoint that if you plan to put four drives in it, buy the four drives you want. Don't buy two now, two later, because you'd have to reset the drives up to build them. This is, so to speak, a disadvantage of, as some people see it from ZFS, but from all the reliability and portability and features you get with ZFS, that's a sacrifice I think is completely worth the trade-off of not being able just to magically drop a drive in and expand your rate array. So without going any further down that rattle hole, that at least wanted to clear up because that's always the first question if you're new to ZFS or new to FreeNAS, those questions come up. So these drives are installed and working. The box is actually turned on right now, and I have it turned on because I wanted to showcase the fact that it's not very loud. And that's an important aspect because being that this is kind of targeted at the small business market, they don't necessarily have a back server room this would be in, and maybe it just sits within the office there you know, if you're working from home, or maybe you're a YouTuber and just need something next to your uh, office to do some storage. You can have this running and still record a video, obviously. And because of one of the features of ZFS, even though it's on, we will... Uh, improperly shut it down because as I've done in my how to kill a ZFS drive video, 
it's very, very fault tolerant, which is one of the biggest advantages of there because ultimately, I mean, you should always have a backup of your data, but you really want a fault tolerant system because unexpected things happen. People randomly unplug stuff. Uh, you don't want a drive failure or a power outage to be a catalyst for a catastrophic failure outside of there. Now, we're gonna go ahead and open up the front which is held on by a magnet, which is nice. It uh, stays closed easy, so even if you tilt this around or something, the door's not just gonna flop open if it's on a uh, unlevel shelf. They, really nice design on this case. It actually comes apart really easy. We're gonna go ahead and cut the seal and open it up. So uh, one other thing is we took this on and off a couple times. That's important that you have a case with a good fit and finish. Uh, it's actually really easy, and I'll even demonstrate it real quick here. Uh, putting the case back on does not require uh, special alignment skills like some of them have in the past, and away we go, it's back on. Even from the back sitting down where I'm not looking over it, um, it's the fit and finish is just done really nice on this. Please leave the case lid on. It is part of the airflow. This has a single fan at the back, one for the power supply, but one single larger fan uh, to bring airflow from the front back to keep the drives cool. These are 7,200 RPM drives. They run a little bit warmer than your 5,400 RPM drives, so you wanna make sure you have adequate cooling. Now, the FreeNAS Mini is powered by an OctaCore Atom processor, the C2750, and inside we have an ASRock board. Now, this is the ASRock slash ASRack board, which means it has IPMI for offline management. This is really cool, and we'll get into that when we cover the software. Now, there are a set of keys, so you can lock the front cage to keep the fingers out, maybe uh, kids who like to touch things, and the drives themselves are individually lockable. Now, the sleds that these came in are not toolless. And uh, before some of you go, but why not? I gotta admit, Toolless, toolless ones sometimes are a little bit fidgety, not that you take the drives out in very often, but when you slide them in, sometimes they don't mind, you gotta wiggle a little and they'll slide in. Depends on some of the toolless designs. These are super smooth. Uh, it feels like they have Teflon on them or something. They, these drives slide in and out really, really well. Also, if you plan to prep this and ship this to a customer, the drives have a handy little tray that you can set them in while they're in the sled. So. If we were to get this and then ship it to a client, or if you were to order this free ass with drives, uh, you can fit them right in here, which I thought was a really nice feature, being able to just take the drives out and set them in here and box it all back up. The packaging's really nice. This is the, one of the first things that notice, and it just keeps getting better from there. Now let's uh, dig a little bit more into what's inside here. So this is a mini ITX board, so it is an AS Rock. It is not some proprietary board. This is a nice feature. This has 16 gigs of ECC RAM. It is expandable, so you have two more slots. We have a pair of eights in there. You could put a couple more if you wanted. The network cards in the back, we have two Intel-based network cards, and then a third network port for management, not part of your standard OS networking. And like I said, we'll cover the offline management. Now, this does not have a USB for boot, like you see with a lot of FreeNAS. This actually has a SATA DOM on it. And SATA DOM is a, you can look this up, but they're small, SATA drives that are designed for being a boot device and come in a lot of enterprise equipment. Now inside, they have left you more SATA ports than there are even ports on here. So we have the four bays in the front, and then we have two more bays with trays and cabling for SSDs. So this will allow you, without having to go and hunt down another cable and a power connector, to add in a pair of SSDs to use for caching drives, more storage, or an L2 arc. Ideally, you're gonna wanna get SSDs uh, if you have a performance need for them uh, for the, either the L2 arc or the caching drives to increase performance. But they left you easy way to mount them right in here, which is really nice. Cabling inside the box is very clean, very organized, uh, so there's really nothing in the way, nothing kind of sloppy looking. Like I said, the people at IX Systems care a lot about the machines, and uh, putting this together with a nice server motherboard, ECC RAM, and nice cable management uh, makes this box just really a pleasure. Now the box does have one PCIe expansion on here, and a slot for it. So if you wanted to, you could add another card in here, provided that card for the Spark FreeNAS. Maybe it would be a 10 gigabit network card um, if you didn't want to just bond the two one gigabits together, because this only has gigabit networking as shipped to us. But other than that, uh, the box is nice, and let's talk about the software features. Now, one last thing I will comment. 
being that it's standard, being that it's ZFS, means if there was ever something to happen to this or if you wanted to upgrade, uh, you can. And the drives themselves are not proprietary. ZFS actually works on more than just the BSD platform or more than FreeNAS. So that being said, if you needed to move these uh, drives to recover data because something horrific happens to the box itself, that is completely possible, so your data would be able to be recovered on another machine, provided it supports CFS. And of course, it's running FreeNAS, so you could also back up your config and load it onto another uh, FreeNAS system and import all your volumes as well. So if you later decide to get a bigger system, that would be possible. All right, so let's look at the software now and kind of dig into this a little bit further. All right, so the free NAS is booted up and ready to log in. Like I said, we've actually already gone through the wizard and set this up. Uh, the IP address, how did I get it? Well, there's two ways. You can plug in the VGA that's located in the back, or you can look at your DHCP server and see what new addresses got handed out. For those of you that don't want to RTFM, that just want to get started, A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four is the default password. We're still testing it, so we haven't changed any of that. System product name, FreeNAS Mini 2.0, load average, uptime, serial number, the Intel Atom. And this did ship to us, this is August of 2018, with FreeNAS 11.1U5 loaded up on that SATA DOM. We didn't have to load any updates, so apparently they keep these machines up to date. U5 has been out for a little while, but uh, nice that I didn't have to deal with any updates. One less step. Now I've gone through and I'm not gonna go in depth on setting this up from scratch. I have my other videos that tell you how to set up and get started with the shares. Let's cover some of the features that make this system a little bit unique and really nice. So we're gonna jump over here to networking and we're gonna look over here at IPMI. Now bound to the same network interface port, the first interface, it does bind a management IP address so you can get to the IPMI interface. And like I said, this is an AS rack board, so we're going to go admin, admin, that is the default, haven't been changed yet. Left things at default so you guys can see this. And we're presented with the offline interface, the dashboard here. So I can look at the motherboard temperature, CPU temperature, uh, different fan speeds if they're plugged into the different motherboard fans, uh, 12 volt rail, V core voltages, and if there's any problems with this. So it has a server health sensor readings, I can do an event log system and audit log, maintenance on here, firmware updates. I thought it was kind of cool. It's got some video recordings if you want to record what the server is doing, console redirection options, J, uh, a Java console. So here's a Java console where we can actually get right to the interface of FreeNAS. We can perform a power server cycle so we can say power it on, power it off, plug in different devices, set up images. This is a really neat feature. Plus we can even display a keyboard on here, which I thought was kind of cool. If you want to be able to force a certain command to it, it does have a software keyboard on it. So you can see when we do these, it does insert the keys. Kind of novel. So you have this direct access. So if the machine is offline or there's some type of problem, the way these IPMI work, even if I power down the machine, I don't lose access to the IPMI. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, you can look this up. This is allows for essentially like an offline management. So it's the same as being plugged right into the keyboard and mouse um, on the machine. And of course, this being able to do remotely when you're troubleshooting or when this is in a server rack uh, or in a back room without any key uh, keyboard or console hooked up to it so you can't see what's going on. This is a just wonderful tool. You can get in and change all the settings on here. Um, and even make this full screen, make it uh, show the cursor if, if there's mouse. This is a really cool feature. Like I said, I, I found this really nice that they uh, chose this board with this feature in here. We're gonna ahead and close that. Uh, from the remote control, we can power off the server immediately, power it off, or really shut down, power on, or just power cycle it. So if there's some type of problem, like I said, this gives you a lot of handy tools, especially if you're gonna install this in a small business where you wanna know what's going on, but you can't see the console. They give you easy access to this. Um, other than that, this everything else about it is standard free NAS uh, storage. It was easy enough to set up volume manager. Like I said, nothing real uh, proprietary about this or nothing overly special uh, other than it's free NAS. So if you're familiar with this, world, you are completely at home. This box runs the standard version. There's like not really any uh, thing about it that makes it super special other than it pulls out the FreeNAS product number right here and it comes with a warranty from IX Systems. But overall, we're really happy with this. It's working great. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, the install, the tests, and we 
actually have created some volumes, deleted some volumes, swapped the drives around, did all of our usual testing. None of them uh, revealed any issues with the machine itself. And I believe it's perfectly fine to be running this uh, C2758 core because it's very power efficient. So uh, this system is not pulling a lot of watts uh, idling. It's sitting around the 50 watt mark. Uh, it scales upward as needed, but 50 watts to have a NAS server running in your back not bad, which also, when you go with low wattage, that also means you're not generating a lot of heat. A lot of high wattage systems means a lot of different heat being generated as well. So our review of this is uh, quite positive. We've rebooted it all kinds of times, uh, unplugged it randomly, and did our usual torture testing with it, popping drives out, and no issues at all. It completely recovered as expected, as FreeNAS does. So we can't really report any issues with it. We'll probably do a follow-up on this maybe in a year or two after it's been running at a client, but all the other FreeNAS systems that we deployed are still working perfectly fine. So if you're interested in this, it's a wonderful little device. If you don't want to have to try to choose which motherboard and what parts to build your FreeNAS, you're looking for a compact, ready-to-deploy FreeNAS solution with all the wonderful power of ZFS, I actually recommend this box at MSRPs uh, for $9.99 for the FreeNAS Mini with four drives, four drive bays, and two drive, two SSDs internally for caching. Uh, so it's a it's a great choice. It is a simple system, and away you go. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback. Or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.